So thank you for introducing me. So I will speak about uh, work with Brian Conrad on, uh, uh, so the title was given by Luzi. Uh, I should write, okay. So, spreading out of rigid analytic families and observations on periodic Hodge theory. So this is a work which is still being uh, uh, written because there are some technical details which are not so clear. The motivation came from questions uh, about uh, rigid analytic spaces, in particular results on periodic Hodge theory, which uh, were proved by Scholz, uh, general, I mean, extending the approach of faultings using perfectoid spaces. Uh, so in particular, uh, if we have a smooth proper uh, rigid analytic space over a non-Archimedean field, so a non-Archimedean field will be complete for a rank one valuation. Uh, so I will uh, suppose that it is uh, uh, discreetly valued uh, uh, field with perfect residue field. So a usual local field uh, as in, that we usually considered in uh, the theory of Fontaine and others who, who looked at comparison using big Ram, big Ries and so on. So uh, then uh, there is a, so there was a conjecture of Tate on, uh, which was originally formulated uh, about, uh, as a Hodge state uh, decomposition. So in any case, one knows that uh, uh, by Scholz's work, so you have that the Z mod P is, uh, fi is a finite dimension, the Z mod P cohomology is finite dimensional, in particular, the QP cohomology is finite dimensional. And then the, the comparison results give well, in, in the sense of, the, at least for dimensions, it gives that this is the sum of dim, like in the complex case, HPX omega Q, P plus Q equal N. And this is also dim of H and the Ram X using, so in particular, the Hodge to the Ram spectral sequence degenerates. And uh, then one can ask the same question, uh, uh, for a, a more general K. So a more general K could, could uh, so here the characteristic, the residue characteristic is positive. The more general K could have zero residue characteristic. It could also be something like the completion of the algebraic closure of QP. So uh, in order to handle uh, this, the natural idea is to, to use uh, uh, something which is like uh, uh, what is used in usual, usual algebraic geometry to say that a variety over the complex numbers descends to a variety over a finitely generated uh, Z algebra. So for example, there is, concerning the same question now in characteristic zero for algebraic varieties, so there is a work of Delini Luzi in, uh, suppose 86, Something like this. So there were, they proved that the Hodge to the Ram, they proved without uh, transcendental methods that, uh, that is using reduction to characteristic P, the, the generation of the Hodge to the Ram spectral sequence, using spreading out to, to smooth uh, schemes over, over, uh, over Z. And uh, so the idea is to, and this was also inspired by Falting's. Uh, periodic Hodge theory. So it is closely related to the material I'm discussing. So now the idea is that uh, things that one can prove by the linear Luzi method for algebraic varieties, one should be able to prove using periodic Hodge theory for rigid analytic spaces. So there was a, a further progress, so a paper by Luzi, Kato, and Nakayama in the log case. So for certain log smooth ma, which are exact, so it's again 
a, a statement on the generation of the relative or should run spectral sequence and local freeness. So this again should extend to the rigid analytic as we hope using some uh, spreading out technique. So of course here we have more structure with log structure. So, so we must uh, uh, then uh, spread out some schemes with extra structure to, so the idea is to, uh, so for example, when K is an extension of QP, uh, we want to, so any X over K which is proper is, a, will be a fiber for a flat proper map Y to Z of a rigid a analytic spaces over QP. So here rigid analytic spaces could be in the sense of Tate, but usually they are quasi compact and quasi separate, then it's also in the sense of Attic spaces, so Berkowitz spaces. So it's a, and then the, the fiber is over a K points. And uh, also we, when you have some assumption like smoothness, then this morphism should be smooth. When you have a diagram, you should have a diagram and you have some coherent shift, you have some coherent shift, morphism between them and so on. So for example, <coughs> we would like to extend log structures, but this is not yet covered by the technique. Uh, so uh, on the other end, uh, this is, uh, so this is uh, 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 more generally, you can have a discretely valued subfield of your non-Archimedean field and you want to uh, uh, spread out. Uh, so you can also uh, try to, yeah, you, you want to, yes, so you can also generalize it slightly to fem what I spoke about with, is it okay or? Like this. What? Okay, so when you have uh, this is discreetly valued, and suppose that x to y is proper flat map of rigid uh, spaces over k, let us say quasi compact and quasi separate, and then by Renault uh, flattening result, so this uh, extends to, comes from a proper flat map of uh, formal schemes, uh, topologically of finite presentation over the ring of integer, which is also flat over the ring of integer. And uh, now uh, so you can uh, restrict to some affinoids, so you can assume, let us assume that y is affine. So in the original situation, if this is a phenol, it doesn't mean that uh, you have to blow up something. So then, uh, uh, then I want to uh, 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 say uh, that this is a base change of. Uh, uh, proper flat map of a, a formal OF schemes with the same properties, topologically of finite type. And this will give, by passage to the general fiber, the, the result on uh, rigid analytic spaces. So on the other end, yeah, yeah, so I'm saying that to, to handle the problem, and the, to, to handle the also the RAM problem 
when the residue characteristic is zero, we need more. So suppose that I have a, a map from A to OK, where A is a Natarian ring uh, addict, so complete for, a, for an ideal, and this is an addict map. Uh, so, for example, we can take some finitely generated Z algebra and some mapping to, to OK, an element that maps to, to a non-zero element in the maximal ideal. And then I want to spread out to, so then the same uh, spreading out result. Uh, so when I have this uh, for formal situation, I want to 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 get a, a proper flat map of uh, topologically of finite type formal a schemes. So I recall that uh, 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 when I look at formal schemes, usually, so I look at only formal schemes which are uh, uh, coming from ring complete for a finitely, finitely, for a finitely generated ideal, and then the the locally something topologically of finite type is SPF of uh, restricted. Formal series divided by an ideal, and there is a, a, a notion of formally of finite type where it's SPF of this with some formal series divided by an ideal. And in fact, the proof gives uh, something formally of finite type, but then it is known by certain blowing up procedure to get things topologically of finite type. So, uh, now, uh, so in the proof, I have to to use uh, the formation theory techniques, but uh, uh, there is a problem to make things sufficiently canonical. Uh, so uh, the, the I have to prove the existence of certain versal deformations. And uh, this, in any, the situation which I, of the formation theory that I uh, want to look at, so is, is uh, related to uh, the notion introduced by Grothendieck of uh, additive cofibered categories in his Springer lecture notes. So this was a work which, uh, before he loses work on the cotangent complex, but his viewpoint so I, I want us to extract things related to his viewpoint from Illusi's results. So let me discuss general thing about Grothendieck uh, additive cofibered categories. So So uh, suppose that I have a, a okay. So C is a, an additive category. So I will. Uh, I found a small modification of Grothendieck's formalism using a pro object, which gives a general statement. So uh, usually I, uh, as it is uh, an abelian category, and uh, I want to consider certain uh, uh, cofibered category over C. So let us say E over C is a cofibered category. Again, all categories are small to avoid some set theoretic problems, and also I want to take pro objects, so this will be a, a large category. Now, uh, the, uh, 
the condition of additive cofibrant category is the following, that uh, for the zero object, I want to get a, a trivial category. And for a, let's say, a product of two objects, I want that this is an equivalence. Now, once you put those conditions, uh, you can uh, introduce uh, an operation on... Uh, so this is the fiber of E over X. So now when you have a morphism from X to, to Y, there is a push forward factor from EX to EY. So now we can... If you are given two objects in EX, you can... Uh, Using this equivalence, get something in x, e, x cos x, and then use the sum up to go to ex. So this gives a kind of tensor product on ex. And then, so one can verify that ex is uh, what is called later uh, a strict Picard category. So the tensor product comes with uh, associativity and commutativity constraints and the zero element satisfying all the rules, including the, the, the strict ones that you, you need uh, about flipping in X cross X. So the strict Picard category the, uh, is uh, equivalent to a category of the following type. So I have uh, a complex. Uh, uh, so I will use the uh, Grotendieck uh, notation, which is, uh, I think the lean use uh, slightly different. So I have, uh, let's say, a complex concentrated in degree 0 and 1, and then uh, I let the objects be k1, and the morphism is given by something in k0. So if dx is y minus... So a morphism from Z to Y is an element in K0 of which satisfying this. So any strict Picard category is something of this type. So essentially you have to give something in the derived category of abelian groups of lengths uh, um, 2. Now uh, uh, there are several conditions on uh, those kind of so the 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 most so there is the condition of left exact when C is a billion, and uh, this means that uh, when I have a short exact sequence in C, I can map E X, E Y, E Z. So I have a point actually. So the so ex maps to the so to speak kernel for, that is the two fibered products of e y and the point over e z and I wanted this to be this should be an equivalence and if this holds then uh, more generally uh, when I have a, a square which is both Cartesian and co-Cartesian. Then uh, EX is maps by an equivalence to the two fibered product. Uh, now, so uh, Okay. 
so uh, in fact, so for every additive cofibered category E to C, so one can associate the left exact. So this is like a R zero E. So this is like the construction of uh, derived functors where you uh, uh, you try to to take the limit over all exact sequences. So you don't assume there are enough injectives, but roughly, if you have an in embedding in something injective, then you take uh, the EB, the kernel, so to speak, from EB to EC as a definition of R0, E of A, and then you take a limit. Now, uh, the, and then Grotendieck also extends the the uh, cofibered category to complexes, but uh, it is uh, useful to extend it to the to pro objects. So E to C extends to maybe E prime over pro C by the obvious rule that you you take E of a formal inverse limit as the two inverse limit of EXI, and this preserves left exactness. Now, uh, there is a, the standard construction of such a additive cofibral categories in terms of a length two chain complex. So suppose that I have an abelian category and a length two chain complex Okay, then uh, I, I uh, want to define uh, for x in uh, C, I can consider home uh, so the home from this to okay, and then I take the associated uh, uh, this was denoted in Grothendieck notes by Q so something under double underline of of L so this uh, uh, is not necessarily left exact so one can consider it's associated left Uh, R zero. Now, it so now when we work with pro objects, we have the free. We can use projective resolution. So the category of pro object is, uh, satisfies the hypothesis, well, dual to ab five, as in Grothendieck's to Oku paper. So it is enough has enough projectives, and one can also construct them in some way directly, and uh, so. I can find the quasi-isomorphism in pro C, and then the zeros R zero will become the Q of P one P zero x. So the fact that P zero is projectives allows you to verify the left exactness, and also it turns out that the extension to pro C of Mm. 
switching the order is. So let me... Uh, So if, you am, if I am given A in, in the object of C and X in EA, so I can uh, look at the problem of uh, uh, the functor of uh, associating to B the morphisms from A to B with uh, an isomorphism to zero of the push forward of X. So by general consideration, when you have a left exact thing, this is pro-representable. So omega X is pro-represents this. So if omega x is actually representable, then Grothendieck says that the typical uh, complex uh, exists. Now, uh, excuse me. Yes. What what does the notation omega x stand for? No, I don't know. I just uh, looked at uh, Grothendieck's uh, uh, book. I don't know the, why he. This is a very old reference, but I'm not sure if the the generalities, in particular what I'm going to explain, I'm not sure if this is completely uh, redone in, in more modern references, but I'm not sure what the omega stands for. I think it's just because of... Uh, so it's just a symbol for the complex that you've written below? No, no. So what happens is... No, no. The point is that given, given an element in OB C and an object in the cofibered category, one looks at the problem of making this zero by mapping A to something. This is pro-represented universal by something called omega x. It could be represented. So in which case it is said that the typical complex exists, but it is easy to see that uh, it is always represented by a pro-object. Okay? Uh, now, uh, 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 so anyway, so you have a notion anyway, of a maximal and quasi-maximal object in the additive cofibred category. So roughly, a maximal one is where uh, uh, for any B, Y over B, you want a morphism. So some object for which there is always a morph, at least one morphism to any other object. And quasi-maximal means that after embedding B in something, you have such a morphism. And then the result, so, so uh, for a, a left exact uh, additive cofibered category E over C, so it is equivalent to R0 QL if and only if there is a quasi-maximal object and the typical complex exists. So this is, so actually this is part of other complicated uh, thing. So now this can be simplified. Uh, so what is the, what's part of the data here? Okay, so this is, uh, no, the data is, so I'm again, uh, so suppose that I have uh, uh, an additive cofibered category and uh, I give an example uh, left exact. I have an example coming from an object, a two-term complex. And now I want to characterize those that come from a two-term complex. So anyway, this is one of the statements 
up to maybe some miss, miss some maybe slightly different conventions in Colton Dick's uh, book. So the the con so the uh, so the condition is that for any a and x there is omega x is represented and representable and that there is a quasi maximal object in the cofibrid category. Okay, now. So uh, now, uh, what I can show is that for every left exact additive cofibered category E to C, then E prime over pro C is equivalent to what is associated to a two-term complex uh, with L0 projective in pro C. Okay, so actually this is almost a tautological if one using so you because you can uh, instead of using a maximal object you just look at uh, all possible uh, uh, objects uh, in the uh, in the total space of the category you can take fibered products and get a pro object which is in some sense maximum except it is a pro object uh, then this will uh, play the role of L1. Then the L0 will be the, sum, the thing which pro represents this omega, just relative to C, not pro C. Then I will get a complex which gives the cofibrid category on C itself. Now L0 is not necessarily projective, but I know that there is a projective envelope, so I can replace it by a complex where P0 is projective, and this is still maximal relative to C, so this again represents the same thing. Then, I know it is represented by this on C, then I have to know it's represented by this on pro C, so this is a problem of inverse limits of those categories. So the problem, so the, it, so it turns out that this has to do with the vanishing of lim1 from P0 of some system. And this, uh, Lim1 is com com computed actually is, the proof gives it in terms of some standard complex and this standard complex is exact in the pro category of pro objects and since P0 is projective, this, this is zero. So, okay, now, um, uh, so in, in some sense, the maximal object is something which in the formation theory problems is is like a versal deformation. So uh, the property, so again I have to move. So uh, maybe this is a slightly different definition. So I will say that uh, uh, x in E A is versal if and only if uh, it is uh, 
maximal and uh, the following holds that if I have a surjection from B to C and uh, I have an object C in EB and I have a map phi. So suppose that I, uh, I have an isomorphism then this can be lifted to some map. So, uh, so I want the lifting of the of phi and of the isomorphism it satisfies the obvious one. So this is uh, like a usual versality condition. Uh, so it is easy to see that if now, so the, po the point is li like this, that if, uh, so I assume uh, left exact, because uh, otherwise, yeah, I want to, actually this subjective, I want to pass to the fibered product, so it's natural to. So, uh, so if A, is maximal and omega a is projective then so a uh, I mean AX, then it is versal. So uh, the reason is that the map actually is defined up to, so the, actually the category is given by this complex, so the map is defined up to factorization by a projective, and since it's projective, one can lift, so that's not so... So, in particular, for if C has project, enough projectives, then <coughs> uh, any, so, any good so let us say good means comes is of the form R zero Q of a complex. Any good additive cofibered category has a versal object. So if one looks at the proof, one can also weaken it slightly. So we can say something is weakly good if the uh, yeah so if the uh, the group of, uh, so the EA modular isomorphism is functorially isomorphic to a, a X to one LA as above for some two-term complex. Yes, okay, for some two-term complex. Now, uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, now, in, uh, 
So this will be, uh, and then I still have a, a, a versal object, which is what I want. So it means that I have to prove a little bit less. I, so, in, so it depends on the formulation of the formation theory that I, I use. Sometimes I just use a formulation, I just control the set of isomorphism classes. So, so now, uh, so the problem that I want to look at is the following. So I have x0 to t0. Let us say I have a, an Eterian affine base, and this is affine. And this is some, let us say, proper flat morphism. And then I want to consider a, a first order deformation, flat deformations over S. So let us say this is a finite type also. A flat deformations. And uh, I want to construct a, a versal deformation for this in this. So this is defined similarly to what uh, uh, So now, in every such a, a situation, I have the ideal of t0 in t. So actually, I will uh, uh, usually, well, it depends on uh, the case. But usually, so one can either assume or not assume finiteness condition on i. But let us, to be in the co previous context, let us uh, just work. Uh, so we have, in any case, a fibered category over the category of T0 modules. Oh, oh no, I was too slow. OK. So, so I have actually a left exact additive cofibered category over OT0 modules, possibly only finite type. And uh, the problem is, is the same as constructing a versatile object there. And so for this, I can in, use the uh, deformation theory like in Elusi's uh, book. So the idea is to, uh, so, uh, so here the, the, I have I, which is kernel OT. So the, so the, the fiber over, uh, over a module M, are also those diagrams over S where the kernel from OT to O to zero is a given module. So this, uh, so anyway, to the diagram X zero to T zero, I get a topos, actually associated with this diagram. And then uh, I uh, have a morphism of toposes to S, let us say, the risky. So this is actually then a deformation problem for this. So I, I will get, it's classified, so the solution is classified by something like, um, so I have the, the pullback of I to the total space. Uh, now, uh, so there is, a, so to control this, so there is a result which is based on Grothendieck duality. And uh, uh, which is the following. So I have uh, now, uh, 
Is this a proper flat map where Y is Netarian with a dualizing complex? <coughs> Then uh, I have R home. I want to look at the polynomial like this. R home to under some boundless conditions. So suppose I have k is d minus coherent of x and l actually d plus coherent or d. So anyway, so it turns out that the, this, so this is not like in the usual duality theorem, which is, uh, well, there are several dualities. There is a trivial duality and, uh, but, uh, you, or the duality where you have f upper shriek and some f lots of. So there it's a, it's a twisted statement where this is, becomes our home of some operation on K L. Okay, so this is actually, so there are some generalization of this when you, instead of uh, flat, you can twist by an F uh, coherent, uh, perfect uh, bounded complex on X. So, uh, so this statement is, uh, in some paper of Jack Hall, and we also found it uh, connection with this. So actually, I need it not for in this form, but for diagrams. So for this topos mapping to S, but actually I have to construct a more, a be, because I want to look at all modules at once in order to identify the, it so depends on what one wants to do. So if one wants to, to calculate the isomorphism classes, then one can just, one needs some x to one, one applies this, and one gets a home of something to the L. So now this is proved by writing L as a double dual of something and using various operations in the derived category, and one has to be careful about justifying things, the right boundedness, but it is, uh, and of course it should hold uh, more generally without dualizing complex, but I'm not sure what are the right hypothesis. It's, Probably you need some approximation results, but then one would have to be in some very fancy uh, derived and higher context, so I'm not. Uh, but for our purposes, usually the rings have a dualizing complex. In any case, the existence of a versal deformation can be easily reduced to this case. So anyway, so this gives a weakly good condition on the, the, uh, uh, additive cofibrate category, it's slightly weaker, but it's enough for versal deformation. This is one way. Now, if I, I use a more complicated, probably, if I use all finite type modules, the, uh, kind of the category of all those make a uh, topos associated to larger diagrams, like in Eluzi's uh, work, so I have morphism of such toposes instead of, then if I do, probably, this is not yet uh, worked out, then if one works out the analog of this for, de for that, one will be able to, to have some upgraded version where one proves directly that uh, the additive cofibrate category is given by this, which is uh, now. So, uh, so anyway, so this is uh, system, uh, the first step in the construction. Then I have to, to uh, work with, uh, I have to, construct n order deformation, but this is relatively easy once you have the first order one. So, uh, uh, again, I want to... Okay, so I'm in the same situation as above, x0 to t0 over s, uh, over, uh, for simplicity, an Italian ring, uh, things of finite presentation, this is proper and flat, but I don't assume dualizing complex because this is just uh, for an intermediate step. Then I can consider uh, uh, nth order deformations, uh, which are defined by the condition that the ideal 
to the power n plus 1 is 0. Then I want to, cons to define a similar way reversal n order deformation. And actually, I want a compatible system of such versal deformations which have the property that I have a kind of xn to tn such that xm to tm is obtained by modding by the kernel of O tn O t0 to the power m plus 1. Uh, where m is less than n. So the idea is that uh, I already, so if I construct xn to tn, then I already, uh, I can look at uh, now, uh, again, a versal first order deformation of this. Now there the ideal is of square zero, but I can make it small in the sense of the ideal, the, the kernel for the map to o t zero kills the ideal, so then I have a small kind of first order deformation of this. And then, uh, when I look at this and divide by the square of the ideal, I get something which is po possibly fatter than the original versal first order deformation. So I have to contract something using the versality. And after one contracts, so one, one can check that this has the right properties. So now, uh, one can put all those things together, get a formal scheme, and then uh, one uses the operation Rigid Geometry to get what I said. Now, I want to explain some, uh, in the few minutes, to sketch uh, very briefly uh, the applications to the problem in, uh, about Hodge to the Ram and related things. So, uh, So now what is the Hodge to the Ram in, let's say, in the complex case? Complex case. So x to s proper smooth of C analytic spaces. Okay, but now we need some condition on the fiber. So I think that people know uh, there is a class, I think, called Fujiki or something. Anyway, the bimeromorphic, bimeromorphic to Keller. So anyway, the result on a Hodge decomposition extends to some, well, it's for Keller, but slightly, so it includes a complete non-projective algebraic varieties. So in particular, I, I can have a proper smooth map of algebraic varieties. So in any case, so Deline proved in 69, that, so using the absolute case, so he proved that the, those sheaves are locally free and the Hodge to the Ram degenerates. And the proof was by reducing to Artinian local situation and then uh, using the comparison with classical cohomology. So here, I, the natural idea is to use something like crystalline cohomology, but in the rigid context, but so the theory doesn't exist also in characteristic zero, but one can, one can uh, mimic it using just some check construction. So the, the strategy is like this. So if I have now proper smooth, let's say rigid K spaces, but it will also work uh, in the Noetherian case. So I need to work in a context where I have uh, basic operations on coherent sheaves and flatness notions. So either the classical rigid case or the Noetherian case. I, and then in the Noetherian case, I have enough what is called rig points or points where I can actually pass the usual rigid analytic spaces. So the, the idea is that uh, I want to prove 
the local freeness and the generation. So, uh, and uh, so point by point, the idea is to use the spreading out technique to reduce to finite extensions of QP. And then the idea is to follow the Lin's argument, well, the philosophy, to go to Artinian local things. So uh, now, so suppose S is Artinian local, and uh, moreover, we can assume that uh, its residue field is K. So K is characteristic zero, one can, uh, but not residue characteristic zero, possibly, but it could, it could be a residue characteristic zero. So now the idea is that I have a constant family over S, and uh, the given family with the same special fiber, so morally they should have the same crystalline cohomology. So I can construct a substitute of crystalline cohomology. So of course this is in the rigid case, but locally, in any case, locally I have the um, uh, affinoid in XS, I can embed them in some uh, smooth uh, affinoids over the, the base, and I can consider the completed the RAM complex. So, so V alpha completed along U alpha, and also for fiber, for intersection, I take fiber product and complete along the intersection. Then I can consider a check construction from the completed the RAM complex. So let's say alternating check to make it finite. Then I get some candidate for the crystalline cohomology of the special fiber, so to speak. So one is to prove that but this is like uh, Poincaré level, local Poincaré level. So one is to prove independence of the covering. And that if you have a smooth lifting, it coincides with the cohomology of the smooth lifting, because you can take this as the only thing in the covering. And then the, they are uh, isomorphic. So in particular, the the RAM cohomology is, the, the RAM cohomology is isomorphic, and so they have the same length, and for using this one can uh, do the lean uh, uh, argument. So, and th this is the proof. So I record, so now, so this problem was, is related again to piade theory. So in Schultz's work, he, he has a statement like this, but assuming the spaces are smooth, and uh, with some, even with some twisted coefficients, so here the, Spaces are not smooth. So another question, so this is... So ah. the result is locally freeness and the degeneration. Yes, this is one result. And so the, the, so another statement which one wants to is about the, the whole state spectral sequence. So, uh, So now this is so X proper smooth over C algebraically closed non-archimediate field over QP. Okay. And in this case, the uh, so what happens is that uh, the, the tal cohomology so this is a bit comp uh, technical. So the talco first, first of all, is finite dimensional for Z mod P and for QP. And so, uh, so, uh, so uh, there isn't a tal in the sense of adic spaces, okay, or, so it's not the usual, but you have to define it in the, okay. Now, the, uh, so this, uh, of course, uh, this is related, so maybe I am, uh, is it minus Q or, uh, yes. 
So in any case, what one, uh, what happens is that uh, the periodic vanishing cycle, so what happens is that it's related to vanishing cycles of, so when you tensor with, uh, so one result is that it's uh, related to cohomology of the shift O plus mod P, which also is, then the vanishing cycles of this, or mod P to the N, are, uh, give you something which is uh, related to differential up to some torsion. So one gets a spectral sequence, but one doesn't have enough Galo action to control the generation. So it could be that uh, it, uh, so one doesn't know that it degenerates up to torsion. But with your previous result? Yeah, no, okay, but now I think one knows in several ways, so I want to explain. So one way, if one knows it has the same, the sum is of the same dimension as the RAM cohomology, so one has to relate this to the RAM cohomology, and, and this is not exactly in Scholz's paper, but one of the statements that he gave. So essentially, the one spreads out X to a family over a QP, a, over a smooth QP analytic space. Then one has the Gauss-Mannin connection on the RAM cohomology, the filter thing. Then he constructs some B the RAM plus local system. Then you can pull it back, and I think that one can Probably his method gives a comparison result with this, so it has the same dimension as B. But I'm not saying that I didn't study this. And so on the other end, another approach is to specialize at some point. So one wants to know that the dimension of this is the same as the dimension of the specialization. In other words, one wants to prove that the Rn F lower star Z mod P is locally constant. So for this, the idea is to prove some kind of Poincaré duality. So in the rigid case, so I want to look at this coefficient z mod p. So I want to, to, to show that if uh, x is, let's say, connected, then h to n x z mod p is one dimensional with basis given by the fundamental class of any point, and that the Poincaré duality maps are perfect pairing. Now, if you are accept this, then looking at the class of the diagonal in x cross x, which can be defined, one will, one will, uh, one will find that this is given by something like the Kunis uh, formula where alpha and beta are dual basis. And then one can spread it out to a neighborhood and compare things and find that those must be a basis in a neighborhood. So the main point, once you know the, the, the Poincaré duality, you get local constancy. And so to prove Poincaré duality, the idea is to tensor with O plus over P. So we have to prove Poincaré duality, or almost Poincaré duality, in fact. So the idea is that the vanishing cycles for this, for suitable formal modules, are a kind of with complexes with kind of almost coherent cohomology. And one wants to prove almost coherent duality for this. And the basis for, and the starting point is the case of a, a nice toric varieties where there are cal explicit calculations that can show the duality. And then, so one is to define the trace map. So the point is that this, so the, in any case, this is a long. Uh, but this, uh, this part is done, in fact, using the assumption that the model is nice. Yeah, you know, okay. So, but now, without knowing that the model is nice, the, the idea is like this. So you have the smooth, you can always assume that it is, the, the model is such that the special fiber is, uh, gen is geometrically reduced, so generically smooth. Then, you, you control the vanishing cycle shifts as b being differentials up to torsion, modulo, that is, modulo some small torsion that are differentials on the smooth locus. You also know, so anyway, I have, I have a model adapted to the perfect theory, so these things which are locally composition of finite etar and rational domain, anyway. Then I have only vanishing cycle in degree zero up to n, and the top one is a module of this small torsion is omega n on the smooth locus, but in particular it maps to the double dual of omega n, which is the dualizing complex. So I get some, some starting point because this is the zero, the beginning of the dualizing complex. So I get 
And I also have Poincaré duality on this. So I have a, a pairing from this tensor, this to the top shift, going to the double dual, going to the dual, relative dualizing complex. So I need a, a local theory of F upper shriek for this kind of situation of, of uh, restricted, like, finite type and essential, I mean, or, or topologically finite type composition of such things. And so this is like the local theory, like in Archer and Conrad's book or the Stax project. Then, and I need the residual complexes for this. In any case, so to construct trace maps, then after one defines the pairing, one has to prove it's a, it's a duality. So the idea is to prove it in the nice situation, then to prove it nice situation modulo a free action of a finite group. And then to use Temkin's work to say that locally you have, you have many uh, neighborhoods where, which are, have a finite et al cover, so where, which is successive uh, uh, um, uh, nodal fibration, and also equivalent for the group action. And then, uh, I have enough of those so I can, the idea is that both sides are kind of morally have some kind of cohomological descent, so I can, I can, uh, so anyway, so this is again some kind of almost mathematics. It has to be made uh, more precise, but, but uh, so anyway, so this is one approach that I hope to speak about uh, later. Thank okay. You. So we will take a few questions. So first of all, we will start from the Tokyo, then Beijing, then Perth. Are there any questions in Tokyo? Okay, are there are any questions? Yeah. So far? In, 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 in the proof of the uh, Hodge degeneration, uh, first theorem. So where does this uh, um, co-5 dot category and cotangent complex uh, and uh, and is it in the... No, no, so I have to construct, I have to construct a, a, a first order versal deformation. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I have to construct a first order versal deformation and... Uh, of what? Of, the, of, of the x0 zero to t0. Zero. So I have x0 over t0. So the idea is that I have something over OK divided by some idea, and I, I first use a, a standard reduction to finite type over Z, or finite type over, uh, over the discrete valuation ring. But th then I have to, to construct successive versal deformations. So the problem is just the first order one. And uh, the problem there is to, uh, that the, the versality condition that I need is not just in terms of the functor of isomorphism classes, but with stronger things. So I, I and uh, I can compute the, iso the, the, iso the group of isomorphism classes. So it's, I need slightly finer information than is provided by, uh, even if when I introduce the extra topos, I need slightly finer information. So one idea is that if one has this general thing on well, it is easy to see it's left exact of favored category. So if one has some general information on this, and this can be used to, to, well, in some cases, so it depends on the path which is used. In some cases, maybe one can use some cheap argument once one knows representability by projects. And so for example, I have this weakly good additive co-fibered category, which has a versal object. So this can be used to, to, to prove the, the existence of a versal uh, but uh, it is the point that originally this was just motivation, but it turns out that uh, the knowing the each fibers, so the point if you know each fiber is equivalent to the category defined by a two term complex, and you know, and then for a morphism, you, ha you have so anyway, suppose you just prove the thing in terms of canonical isomorphism in the derived category, this doesn't carry enough higher information to, to deal with situation with three, three objects in the base category. So it, it will not give a sufficiently rigorous proof of the, of the versal. So 
So then one has to find some way around it by passing. So the, the, but in any case, if one works with a topos with, of diag coming from diagrams, one can probably get around it, but one has to be careful. If one uh, is less careful about, so maybe using this weekly good notion, I can do, so it, it depends, I mean, it has to be fixed in some way, but it's, there are several small al technical alternatives how to do it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, other okay. questions from mm -hmm. Tokyo? No, that's it. So, are there any questions in the uh, Okay, so <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Uh, I'm a little confused on the last part on the hot tail spectral sequence. Yes. Uh, so, do you want to say you can prove this uh, degeneracy of hot tail spectral sequence by using spreading out, or do you prove something new? Or? I don't know, I thought about, no, but it turns out that I don't, uh, so I thought, so some time ago I thought about this, so just without knowing the it, so that it will follow if one proves that the dimension is locally constant. Then I tried to prove the dimension is locally constant by using almost Poincaré duality, but I think that actually one can prove the degeneration without this by using, by being, looking at what this, this periodic codes. Following the same of, of let's say, Fatin's or Schultz directly in this case. I think this is, I would say, I, in any case, one of the statements, some of the statements announced by Schultz is, was that so over. The statement is known if, if you work over uh, something like QP or finite extension of QP, but we don't know it over C, and the result is to go from QP to C. Yeah. So this is the new thing. Ah, uh -huh, I see. So this is the new thing. Okay. So in any case, if you, uh, so in any case, without uh, looking at, uh, so in any case, so I think that, uh, so in any case, one, one, one way is to accept the, uh, so to, to just uh, use uh, as a black box the equality of the dimension for finite extension of QP, and then try to prove that this gives a locally constant shift, but using a part, a pa that's the beginning of the, of the Schultz's approach relating to O plus over P without using all the period shifts. And then there I want to relate it, I want to use ideas on, uh, on uh, que almost square and duality to, 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 to handle that. Uh, so th this is uh, one way to... A long project. Okay, so okay. are there other yeah. questions yeah. in DG? Uh, I think no. Okay. no other questions. Are there questions in Paris? So uh, since we are moving to the short time, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>